Yeah, I mean, PHP and Node.js and all those sorts of things are good examples of what I'm talking about, really. Um, they're really low quality, right? Um, and they're designed around something uh, that is a reasonable idea, which is that you're trying to make something which allows you to do uh, a particular type of software development more rapidly, right? Um, but they totally fail to actually deliver high quality software in that domain. Uh, you know, and people like to argue about this. So, you know, I'll refrain from arguing with you. All I would say is I've literally never seen a Node.js or PHP program do anything even remotely close to uh, what would be relatively easy to do uh, in C in terms of actually utilizing the system resources to do what it is that you want it to do, right? And uh, that is unfortunately currently not really the concern of most people who do programming. What they want to do is they want to save themselves time, right? They want to be able to produce a piece of software with the least amount of effort on their part. And that's not necessarily because they're lazy. That may be because they're trying to be fast, right? Um, and, you know, if you're, try if you're in a competition with other companies to get things to market as soon as possible or those sorts of things, then you have, uh, c you know, you're constantly in the market for technologies that you believe will cut your uh, development time. And the quality of the thing that goes out the door isn't really necessarily your primary concern, especially because it also isn't your competitor's concern. So if you know, like, I mean, to give you a simple example, if both Google and Facebook are trying to ship a particular product into a particular space, they both know that, you know, what each other's going to ship is going to be really, really low quality. It's going to be incredibly slow. It's going to be incredibly bloated. It will require a fantastically powerful machine to run at all. Uh, you know, I mean, you take a look at the like behavior of, of, you know, Gmail on a typical machine and it's slower than the email program that I used in 1996, right? Uh, it's slower than Alpine. I don't know how that's possible, but it is, right? Um, and so you get into these situations where you're like shipping a quality product is not really what you're trying to do. What you're trying to do is hit some very low minimum quality bar, but be out there earliest or something, right? And that typically is what they're trying to do. So if you're in that environment, it, it you know something like Node.js or PHP might make logical sense to you because you're like, well, I feel like we can throw something together quickly. And yes, most of the things in it will be kind of janky. Um, you know, like Gmail, like I said, for example, is riddled with bugs. There's there's so many bugs in it. I've lost count of all the bugs, and they never get fixed. They're just there, and they're there forever. Um, and it's always slow and, you know, it can't even do basic stuff like run offline reliably or any of these sorts of things, right? So the quality bar is super, super low. Um, but they're in a space where you just don't have that competition, right? Um, and so when you're in that space, sometimes it ends up being the case that you want to go for a very different type of thing. And that's where Node.js and, and PHP come in. They make trade-offs in that direction where they're like, okay, you know, we're not so worried about actually shipping something high quality. We're, we're just worried about, will it sort of work? Like, can we slap together something that sort of works and, you know, get it out there quickly? And that is what like most web technologies feel like to me. Like I've never seen really much of a web technology that wasn't based on that. And maybe, you know, Go was not exactly that way. Go was a little more in that direction, but it still, it still made some concessions that were obviously in that direction, like the garbage collection and so on. So I don't really know, I don't know exactly what, I don't know exactly what the true underlying philosophy of Go actually was. Like it was very, it was sort of a little bit odd, um, but it was definitely more in that direction than anything else that I'd seen that, that much is true. And so I'm not really interested in that future. If that's the future that people want, then that's fine. But you know, at some level, we all have to kind of uh, do the work that we believe is what we want to see happen in the future. For me, I want good programs where I'm not depressed every day when I use them. And when I open up my mail, it's super fast and efficient and it doesn't have bugs like when I type in someone's name and hit return, it selects some totally other person's uh, address to send in because it hadn't actually finished its round trip to the server and it just used whatever was on top of the completion list, even though there actually would have been a name that matched exactly, right? This happens to me in Gmail all the time. Like, I don't really wanna live in that future. I wanna live in a future where, you know, um, everything works really well. Uh, and these aren't hard problems. You know, email is about sending text back and forth. It's a problem that was solved in 1970. 
um, you know, probably earlier than that if you really look into it. Uh, and so, you know, I just, I want to see us move towards a world where programmers acknowledge that difference. And at least some of us are working towards making software in the space that's about quality. And it's not about competing for whatever these other things are or just about making money, right? It's about actually trying to ship quality software um, that really cares about the user and their experience and uh, you know, allows you to be happy using your computer again. And that's, that's something that I haven't experienced for a long time and that's really what I want to see happen eventually. And uh, yeah, so Handmade Hero isn't gonna do that. You know, it's not gonna solve that problem. It's a baby step, right? And uh, and I, you know, acknowledge that, but, you know, I, I don't know what else to do. I don't know how else to convince people to be more concerned about quality. I don't know how to uh, explain to them even why PHP is such a bad way to develop software, right? Um, because typically when you try to explain that, either people get very defensive and rightfully so if they're a PHP programmer, you're going to be defensive, right? If someone tells you that the thing you're doing is low quality, then you're going to be upset. Um, and so there's that. And then there's also the fact that their mental model is very different, right? They, they are looking at, again, that very low quality bar and saying that's what software is, right? Like a person who works on the front end for Facebook doesn't see it as low quality because they don't, it's like, you know, it's like the fish in the water doesn't think about the fact that they're in the ocean. They're just like, no, that's the world. It's like, no, the ocean's like this one thing. There's like air and stuff out there as well, right? The stuff that you're all around becomes what you're used to and you're unable to even see anymore how bad it might actually be, right? And like, you know, it, it's weird because you talk to someone in that development space and you hear these very strange things and you're like, oh, we don't have to care about that kind of performance because it takes you know, it takes like 50 milliseconds for things even to go to back and forth to the server and stuff. And I'm like, I don't even know what those statements mean. It's like, that's the kind of latency we're used to hiding in game development all the time. And we update it like 60 frames a second and stuff, right? It's like, no, you don't, you don't use the fact that there's network latency as an excuse for why your product's so bad. That means you have to do a good job designing the program so that the user doesn't experience that latency. Like, why aren't you figuring out how to take that away, right? Um, but instead, they're just like, well, let's just have everything run <laughs> at like 200 milliseconds of lag, and then you won't care that there's a server lag. And it's like, oh, how did we get here, you know? Um, but yeah, so that's, that's the end of my, my lament on that. And like I said, it's sad, it depresses me, but you know, what are you gonna do? And so, yeah, with Handmade Hero, I'm just trying to basically provide one piece of perhaps that future puzzle. Whether it will help or not, I don't know. Um, but that is largely what we're trying to do. And I'm doing it in the game programming space because that's space I have uh, sort of the most familiarity with. But really the programming concepts I don't think vary that much. I've done other software before uh, that just wasn't in you know commercial. Uh, and I tend to apply the same stuff pretty much always. And you know, I feel like just that program, programming discipline tends to be very similar. And there are some concessions that you make in different spaces at different times, but on the whole, the, the concept that like, oh, web programming is way different than game programming. And so like the things that you're saying here don't apply is, is just kind of nonsense. Like programming is pretty much programming. And the only real trade-offs that you can make are ones about that quality bar uh, and stuff like that. And saying like, you know, and, and we make those trade-offs in games too. Like when, people go and do a whole game in like C-sharp XNA or something, they're making exactly those same trade-offs, right? And those might be smart trade-offs um, or acceptable trade-offs for the particular problem domain, right? It may be that for the particular thing you were doing, that was fine. And so, you know, yeah, there, there isn't really that difference that people think is there. Uh, it's really more about what your competitive space looks like and what your reward system looks like. You know, like, are you gonna get rewarded for shipping this thing way earlier uh, with lots of bugs in it and very slow performance? And if the answer is yes, then you're probably not gonna evolve this uh, culture of, you know, trying to get that quality level up, right? Um, on the other hand, for all we know, it's because there just haven't been competitors in that space who do that. Like maybe someone will come along who's all about high performance web software and all of a sudden all these other people are out of business. I don't know, right? I mean, that could be true. Uh, but 
I really have no idea, right? And it's not really my place to speculate on those things because those are very complicated market-oriented things that, you know, who knows, right? Um, so again, I don't pretend to say that that's the right future, is a future where people care about that quality bar more. It's just the future that I want to see. And so I try, you know, mostly these days, what I've been trying to do is plan out all the things that I'm working on, uh, including Handmade Hero, to be about moving in that direction because obviously there's plenty, the default movement is to, in the low quality direction. So I don't think we need any more people pushing for that. Uh, it's got plenty of push as it is um, and, pl and uh, billions and billions of dollars behind low quality software. It's the primary thing. It's in fact, 99% of all software development dollars are spent developing low quality software. That's what they do, right? Um, whether it's, you know, IBM making your website weird inventory management system for the state of California or something, that's going to be really low quality or it's, you know, um, do your latest web startup that's all about uh, trying to deliver fresh flowers uh, using a web app integrated phone thing that runs on new Android tablets or whatever it is. Um, that's where all the money is. And so basically, if we want to have some alternatives available, even if it's only a thin band, Again, I think we really have to work on that because the billions of dollars isn't behind quality software. No one right now is putting up billions of dollars to make quality software. That's not uh, where the industry goes. And so it really is the case that people who care about software quality are going to have to make that push.